Morning. Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Well, the news has dropped. Mr. Flashy Enforcer Scott Caper disciplined after jail booze up with Kinnahan Criminal. Now this sends a message that Mr. Flashy and his number two, Scott Caper, who is the heir apparent, to the Mr. Flashy Gucci gang are still tight with the Kinahan cartel. And the Kinahan number two, obviously, Liam Byrne, again the heir apparent, staying in Ibiza. <coughs> Caper is in more trouble as he lashed out as officers were removing him. Now, it was mentioned that Scott Caper was involved in the murder of the man who got six years, I can't remember his name now, a couple of a week ago, a couple of weeks ago, who was murdered in prison. And someone said that Scott Caper was watching the door. But anyway, jang jailed gangland, inf gangland enforcer Scott Caper is facing disciplinary proceedings in Mountjoy Prison after he became violent to officers following a prison booze-up. Caper, 28, an enforcer for the Mr. Flashy gang, was knocking back contraband whiskies and beer with Kinahan hit team member Glenn Thompson in his cell on Sea Wing last Friday when they were discovered by officers. <coughs> When efforts were made to remove the pair from the cell and confiscate the alcohol that had been smuggled into the prison, Caper is understood to have lashed out at officers. The incident led to both Caper and Thompson being placed in close observation cells in another part of the prison. Rumours that a phone containing compromising material was afterwards recovered from Caper's cell are understood to be untrue. Sources say both Caper and Thompson will also face disciplinary proceedings over the smuggled in alcohol, but Caper is in more trouble after he lashed out as officers were removing him. Scott Caper is considered the right-hand man and key enforcer on the outside for the fingerless drug boss named, nicknamed Mr. Flashy, Glenn Ward. The 28-year-old who was sentenced to two and a half years in prison last July for stealing 50, a 50,000 euro cash box from a security guard mixes freely with the Kenahan inmates who treat him as one of their own. Glenn Thompson and his brother Gary, 37, both from Fingless, were two members of a three-man hit-for-hire gang that targeted Patrick Patsy Hutch. They pleaded guilty at the Special Criminal Court in July 2019 to unlawful possession of four firearms with intent to endanger life at Belmont Hall Apartments, Gardena Street in Dublin on March 10th, 2018. The third member of the gang, a former British Army soldier, Robert Brown, 37, received an 11 and a half year jail sentence for his role in the crime. The three armed men were caught red-handed just 250 metres from the home of their intended target as they were about to carry out his murder. Kinahan cartel link gangsters such as Caper and Thompson are now the undisputed controlling force within the criminal population in Mountjoy Prison. Backed up by Eastern European muscle provided by Polish cage fighter Leszek Sychulik and a number of the killer's countrymen, Kinahan gunman Trevor Byrne, gang quartermaster, Graham Gardena, the Thompsons and Brown wield enormous power over the prison's inmates. Other high-profile inmates linked to the cartel include money launderer Graham the Wig Whelan and Glenn Holland, who is serving a six-and-a-half-year prison sentence for possession of guns and drugs. 
The gang's ranks behind the bars in Mountjoy also include Declan Mr Nobody Brady, who is being housed in the prison's progression unit. Cartel criminals continue control the flow of drugs into the prison and were responsible for the largest ever consignment of contraband smuggled into an Irish prison in a food truck two years ago. Well, there you got it now. Right, the, the dust is starting to settle. We've got Mr. Flashy, he's in Forza, Scott Caper. Now, he's serving two and a half years, so he won't be long before he's, he's out. So if anything happens to Mr. Flashy, right, he's ready to step in and he will be the boss. Welcome to the new boss, same as the old boss. So it seems Mr. Flashy's gang is still joined at the hip with the Kinnahans. And we we'll just have to see, right, what's going to happen going forward in Fingless. But as an outsider looking in, well, the way it looks like Mr. Flashy, Glenn Ward, if someone takes him out, if he is assassinated after the five, six, seven previous attempts failed, then you've got Scott Caper, who is ready to take over the Gucci gang when he gets released, which won't be long. And in the meantime, Eric O'Driscoll, he could take over. Glenn Ward's brother. But it's all craziness. So we just have to see going forward. But now all of a sudden they've taken, um, you see, what's happened, you see, in the jail, they think that they're the number one, the top dogs, top rat, you know, king rat. Scott Caper, right, he's having a drink with um, Glenn Thompson in his cell last Friday, thinks, right, that they're immune. And then the prison officers came in to bust him and he went potty. And then now they've been taken out. But as in the article said, there are plenty more other people to step in. So that's the first one we got down. Now, the next one we got is U Spanish police detain UK cocaine boss on run with a life sentence waiting for him back home. A convicted drugs kingpin, kingpin has been, de been detained by police in Spain following a major investigation. The drug lord, who has not been named, had been on the run from the UK where a life sentence is waiting for him following his conviction for dealing large quantities of cocaine in Scotland. Since managing to escape the country, he has been hiding out in Spain but was eventually tracked down to a small town in Tenerife. In footage captured by the Sp Spanish National Police, the fugitive can be seen wearing dark clothing, a baseball cap and sunglasses as he walks along a terrace in Arona in Tenerife. Plain clothes cops then quickly intercept him, placing him in handcuffs and putting him in a police car. The team of officers had been monitoring the criminal's whereabouts since the UK's National Crime Agency contacted them back in April to inform them he may have fled to Spain. In a statement, the Spanish National Police said the fugitive was wanted by the United Kingdom <coughs> for some events that occurred in 2022 after being sentenced to life imprisonment for being the leader of a criminal organisation that, based in Scotland, was dedicated to the preparation and storage of large shipments of cocaine and diamorphine as well as its subsequent distribution through Scot throughout Scotland. The agents carried out multiple procedures in several Spanish cities such as Alicante, Malaga and Ibiza, where Liam Byrne is, until he was located on the island of Tenerife, where finally he was located and arrested in the town of Arona. <coughs> It was recently revealed that Curtis Warren, dubbed Britain's Pablo Escobar, will face strict con conditions upon his release from prison this year. Despite being known as Liverpool's most infamous gangster, Warren, who has spent almost half his life behind bars, 
might not even be able to return to the city where he was born after he set free. He would also be on the National Crime Agency's list of individuals issued with serious crime prevention orders which limits what Warren can do for five years after his release. According to Mail Online, Warren not only faces a possible ban from Liverpool, but his presence on the NCA's list mean he will also be restricted in his ability to buy property, cars, borrow money, make transfers and use foreign or digital currency like Bitcoin. Failure to comply with the above could land Warren back in jail. Not only is it claimed Warren still has £1 million hidden away in plastic bags in Liverpool, but prosecutors also fear he could have around £200 million stashed in secret. The Liverpool Echo reports that prosecutors are wary of the murky network of hidden assets through which he could access money made via drug trafficking. Sentenced most recently in 2009 to 13 years in prison after being found guilty of conspiracy to smuggle cannabis, Warren insists he has no money left and has previously not paid a confiscation order that would have seen him leave prison years ago. Yeah, but that was £98 million. <clears throat> so now, right in this article there is a link. The drug lord has not been named, had been on the run, and there's a link to another story, okay? And this one is from May of 2022. Police warn not to approach MMA champion who is on the run. Police have warned people to stay away from a mixed martial arts champion who is on the run for a number of serious offences. Darren Towler was found guilty of several counts of conspiracy to supply drugs at, in his absence at Teesside Crown Court. Durham Police launched a manhunt after the former cage fighter failed to attend his trial on the 22nd of March 2022. They are now urging people not to approach him if they see him, warning that he is a large man who is a skilled fighter. Towler lifted the UCMMA title back in 2011, but quickly became involved in drug dealing and was caught transporting ecstasy tablets in a new castle pu car pub car park. He was also once found in possession of cocaine and cash when officers pulled over his Citroen Berlingo after officers saw him meeting up with a man in a Toby Carvery pub in Kingston Park. In 2016, he was sentenced to three years and three months after he was found guilty for possession of 12 grams of cocaine as well as 2,000 ecstasy pills and 2,300 pounds in cash. He was let out on licence that same year. However, a spokesman for Durham Police said it's important people stay away from him. The statement read, Taylor is described as six foot three tall of large build. He is a well known in the local community having had a career as a professional MMA fighter. If you see him or know of his whereabouts, do not approach him. Instead, call the police. Towler was also part of a group that was charged in 2016 for trafficking heroin destined for the streets of Teesside. However, during a four-week trial in November that year, he was found not guilty of conspiracy to supply heroin. His latest trial saw Towler convicted on three counts of conspiracy to supply Class A and Class B drugs. His co-accused, John McNaughton, 34, of Bethune Road, Middlesbrough, Anthony Thurlow, 28, of Holyrood Court, Middlesbrough, Terence Duffield, 42, of Claremont Court, Thornby, and Sean Hornsby, 48, of No Fixed Abode, were all found guilty of the offence. A sentencing hearing for Towling and his co-defendants is set to take place on um, at Teesside Crown Court on 12th and 13th of May. So, this source is indicating that the man that's being looked for, or sorry, the drug lord that's been arrested in Tenerife is Towler. 
But he don't look six foot three, to be honest with you. He looks shorter than that, so I'm not sure it's him. But we just have to see what the name is. Now, the man, the, the, the man that's arrested in, in the video is not six foot three. So I don't know what, oh, maybe he's connected to this other geezer that's on the run, Towler. But we'll have to see. Is it Darren Towler? It is, isn't it? Yeah, Darren Towler, MMA fighter, drug dealer. Like him, Darren Till, MMA fighter, drug dealer. Capo in the Kinahan Cartel. So that's that one out of the way. We, we still yet to get the name. Okay, of the, the fugitive that's been arrested in Spain. Um, right, what we got next? Oh, this is a this is a harrowing story, this one. Parents chased carjacker through Phoenix Park after he took car with baby inside. The child's mother and partner, who were both in their 20s, had briefly left the car with the engine running outside their home with two young children in the back seat. Well, that is irresponsible to start with. The parents of a nine-month-old baby who was driven away when a thief stole the car from outside their home flagged down a learner driver and pursued the criminal as he sped off. <clears throat> Now, a relative of the couple has told how the young parents were frantic with fear when the thief stole their vehicle outside their family home in St. Atrakia Road in Cabra, Dublin. The child's mother and partner, who were both in their 20s, had briefly left the car with the engine running outside their home with two young children in the back seat. It is believed the thief had been watching the couple and then spotted his opportunity and seconds later jumped into the Skoda at around 7pm on Sunday. The baby was found unharmed afterwards. This morning, a relative of the family told of the terror of the shocking incident. They told the young mother had strapped their nine-month-old baby in the car and put their seven-year-old child in another seat. She ran back she ran back into the house briefly and the next thing the older child came running in. The child had jumped out of the car when the man got into the driver's seat, the re relative said. The parents were frantic and as the car sped away, they ran down the road after it. There was a learner driver on the road who saw the commotion and got the parents to get into her car and they followed the man who'd stolen their car. But they didn't know which way he went and it took a while to catch up with the car. He went through a red light somewhere and they eventually ended up in the Phoenix Park where the car sped up and went flying over speed ramps the learner driver couldn't keep up. The young parents were terrified for their baby and thought it was still in the car. But then the young mother got a phone call to say the baby had been found back on the Faso Road opposite a group of shops. It appears the thief had realised there was a baby in the car and pulled in, unstrapped the, unstrapped the baby from the baby seat and abandoned the infant on the path before the young parents had caught up with the start car after it was stolen. The baby was left on the path and crying, the relative said, with tears in her eyes. In Fassel Road, residents told at their shop when the baby was hurriedly taken from the stolen car and put into the put onto the path beside the busy road close to a junction. Oh my goodness. There were three women chatting on the path and the next thing the car pulled up and the man just got out and took the infant from the back of the car and just left it down on the path and sped away. They couldn't believe what happened and ran to the child to mind it, said one resident who lived near where the baby was abandoned. The next thing, there was Gardy and an ambulance at the scene and a lot of commotion. Nobody knew for sure what was going on. It was just an awful thing to happen. No one has been arrested and the car has not been recovered. The incident is being investigated by detectives at Mountjoy Gardy Station in Dublin. A source said the baby was unharmed in the incident and did not need medical attention afterwards. CCTV is being examined in an attempt to identify the thief 
and establish where he travelled in the car. Well, what an unbelievable story. That could have ended so tragically. Thank goodness it didn't. I mean, can you imagine if, if that car thief hadn't have taken the baby out and is going at high speed over speed ramps, could have crashed into some... Oh, my goodness. But this is getting worse. It's lawless in Dublin. It's lawless in Liverpool. They're becoming narco states, narco counties. And Dublin, a narco capital of a narco country, Ireland. Unbelievable. Honestly, this is not going to end well, any of this. So that's that one. So there's just a few stories of what's been going on today. And then, of course, we've got um, tomorrow, I think it is, or we've got uh, Liam O'Pray, 21, is appearing in court at Manchester Crown Court with the, on the murder of Rico Burton, who's the cousin of Tyson Fury. And when um, Liam O'Pray was arrested, he was found in possession of cocaine. So was it a drug deal gone wrong? Okay. And now what's happened, Tyson Fury is using his influence in the media to get a positive press and media about Rico Burton, which is natural, I suppose. But in the fullness of time, the full truth will come out. I mean, people are saying he was a peacemaker in this, that and the other. Well, my question's always been, what is a 31-year-old man doing out at 3am in the morning at a bar full of teenagers? You see? And this is all drugs related. Drug cartels, drug dealing, aggressive, antisocial, bullying, violent behaviour. <clears throat> and tragically, Rico Burton lost his life. But when the truth comes out, okay, he is no shrinking violet. He is no angel. We already read about the story where, of the cruelty to the 36 puppies found in the car in Dublin back in 2013, which then the, the charges were dropped, and the Burton family are infamous around Manchester, and the Gorman family, they're feared, despised, those families, right, antisocial thugs, that's all they are, violent, threatening, aggressive, all involved in drug dealing, all involved in criminality of whatever level, theft, robbery, all of that stuff. You see, and Tyson Fury has got a big decision. Does he want to remain with his so-called family, which are scum? We all know. I mean, there's no dispute on it, really. You know, the world that Tyson Fury comes from and his family, their low life, right, dregs a society. So does Tyson Fury want to make a clean break, go to the United States of America, cooperate with the United States government against the Kinahan cartel, okay, never look back, never come back to the UK and become a billionaire? Or does he want to stay, okay, right, in that shithole, okay, the northwest of England, right, that um, sewer, Okay, mixing with all them low-life dregs of society that you can see on the Fury Fest when he goes round the country. Okay, and have the adulation of a very small percentage of people. Well, that's his decision. And I think he's coming down on the side that he is going to flee to the United States of America. Take up his career again, become a billionaire. Okay, and turn his back on all his family, the dregs of society, and all those scumbag criminals that follow him, and turn his back on the Kinnahans, okay, and give evidence against the Kinnahans. That's my personal opinion. I've got no evidence, but I just see the way that this is going. And the excuse he'll give is, I can't take it anymore. My cousin was murdered. My career is going to be over with my connection to the Kinnahan cartel, and I can't. You know, I can't take it anymore. So for immunity from prosecution, I'm going to give evidence against the Kinnahans and I'm going to leave the UK for the US, never to be seen in the UK ever again. That's my personal opinion. 
So anyway, this is going to be Art Hostage, episode 325. Okay. We've got Mr. Flashy, number two, in jail. Okay, sends a message that the Gucci gang, Mr. Flashy, are still joined at the hip with the Kinahan cartel. We've got um, the drug kingpin who was sentenced to life has been arrested in Tenerife. The name Darren Towell has been out there, but I don't think it's him. But he was in Ibiza and then he went to T Tenerife. Well, maybe Liam Byrne got orders from Dubai to stick him in. You know, all part of the Kenahan cartels mitigation that they're going to use. They're sitting there, right, s sticking in all the rivals over the last few months since April and obviously before. We don't know. We then had the terrible, frightening case, but with a happy ending of the little baby being in the back of the car, a nine-month-old baby when it was stolen. Okay, and then we finished off with Tyson Fury. And the man accused of murdering his cousin, Rico Burton, Liam O'Prey, was caught with cocaine. So was it a drug deal go, gone wrong? Art Hostage, episode 325, signing off.